So in one of my recent workshops, I casually mentioned that uh, most of the time in financial time series, prices are really heavily correlated, whilst returns are not. And one of the participants just said, oh, Tom, you know, why, uh, why did you say that? Well, is that true? And, and, and what's behind it? And so in this video, I actually want to talk about and demonstrate to you a little bit why this is the case and uh, that it actually is quite obvious indeed that prices are heavily autocorrelated uh, while returns are generally not very autocorrelated with each other. And so, so when I say not autocorrelated, it doesn't mean they are not completely not autocorrelated, but if you uh, take the autocorrelation of prices and the autocorrelation of returns, the, the autocorrelation in prices is much, much stronger than the one in returns. And I don't want to dive uh, too deep into all the autocorrelation functions and all this. I just want to give you a really simple demonstration of why that is that it's relatively easy to understand without all the complexity and the jargon. Okay, and for that, uh, I use a Google Colab environment. So I created Jupyter Notebook in Google Colab. The first thing I do is I install uh, Y Finance to get some market data, and I also I also uh, import a few bits here, uh, NumPy, PyLab, and of course Y Finance. So um, there is uh, sometimes when you import Y Finance, you get a few error messages, but we can just disregard them, and it will run regardless of that. Now to get started, just produce. Uh, some randomized time series because that's actually the easiest uh, thing to demonstrate it on and then um, from there we can also see whether that applies uh, to real time series as well. So in order to do this let's just produce a series of returns and we do this by just creating 1000 uh, normally distributed uh, random numbers so um, we, you know, uh, we could say, well, uh, generally returns are normally distributed, and then uh, we just produce them. And if we want to produce a price series, we have to yeah, use a cumulative sum or a cumulative product or whatever. Uh, and in in some of my courses, I actually explain why you would use a cumulative sum or a cumulative product. They all have their different uses. So please refer to some of my YouTube videos uh, in order to, fi uh, to find out more why that is. In this case, we make it simple for us and we just produce a cumulative sum. So we call p mp dot cumulative sum of r. And let's just add a uh, constant to it so it looks a bit more like a uh, price series. And then what we can do is we can do plt dot plot and if we plot P, it should look a bit like a price series. And you can see here it starts at $100 and then moves up and down. So what we're actually doing is here, we're just producing a random distribution of dollar returns. And then this is what we get here. Okay, so um, if we do the same for R, what we see is a very much uh, mean reverting our, our curve here it's just the returns so sometimes they're up sometimes they're down and so this is really what you would expect and if you plot a histogram then you see that there is a normal distribution of them um, so let's just do this pld.hist r and let's just go uh, we have 40 bins and you can see here I mean it's not perfect so if you want to get a super nice looking normal distribution of course you need to have a much, much higher sample size. All right, so uh, now that we have our returns and our prices, let's just have a look at the uh, autocorrelation inside those. And let's just start with the autocorrelation inside uh, the returns. And what we do is we just use autocorrelation with lag one, uh, and then we can just increase it to other legs as well and see what happens. So we just go straight into plotting mode and we go R. And so what we do is um, we plot uh, the uh, yes, basically yesterday's returns versus today's returns. And the way we can do this is we can plot all the R's starting from zero to the one before last. So R from zero to minus one. And then we plot this against R from one, so starting with the second 
one all the way to the last one so all the way to the end and what we can do is we can plot this as dots and when we run it we can see here it's pretty much a, uh, a big blob and there is not really an awful lot of correlation in it so um, and this is what we expect because they're just random numbers there's no connection between uh, the R of the previous day and the R of today now what happens if we turn this into the prices so we actually plot the correlation of prices so let's do this and boom here we go this is actually a really really strong correlation now why is that so what what's the uh, what's the deal here why are prices that heavily auto correlated and returns or not well it's pretty easy to see um, so if we plot the prices again um, So this is our price curve. We can actually see that when we get today, when we use a price at any point here, today's price, the next price is the same as the previous price plus minus a small return up and down. That's it. And sometimes, of course, like here, the return can be quite large, but most of the time, the previous price is really like. Uh, the today's price is actually just like yesterday's price plus or minus a small difference whereas today's return is completely different from yesterday's return so that's why the two are strongly correlated and um, that's not just uh, true for like one you know we could easily just um, expand that uh, to other legs as well so so you know we couldn't um, do this for like uh, uh, two days ago and so on um, so uh, the easy way to do this is literally just change this from one to two and you can see it's still relatively correlated but it's al already less correlated now if we go uh, further in the lag we can see that the correlation actually gets less and less you can see this here so here the correlation has already dropped off by quite an amount and why is that because the price 20 days ago uh, from the price 20 days ago you need or you have 20 price movements all the way to today so the dispersion of the prices from 20 days ago to now is obviously a lot higher than it was uh, from yesterday all the way to today and so this is why uh, prices are heavily correlated and returns are not and then you could say, well, Tom, you know, this is just a random price series, but what about uh, real stock prices? Uh, would that be the same thing? And let's just give it a go and see whether that's true. So what, let's just do this YF, uh, we'll download something. And so we we'll download everyone's favorite, uh, and it's got a lot of price data here. We download Apple, and let's just call this AAPL. All right, so we download Apple, it's done. And um, what we want is the adjusted close prices. So let's first uh, plot this and see what it looks like. Okay, so here we can see, so this is the uh, price curve for the adjusted close prices of Apple and now what we could do of course is also we could um, get the apple uh, returns so we could call this a reds equals and now let's just uh, use the percentage returns and they are pct um, change so in in pandas we have the pct change function and then we just get rid of any ends so we go drop an A okay so uh, let's just have a look what's in a reds okay so here we've got all the returns all right now what we can do now is we can do a plt dot plot and then we go a reds and then of course because we are in pandas we go i log and we do the same from zero to minus one and then uh, we go um, same thing here a reds from 1 to the end and put a bullet there 
and we can see again here we just see like a really straightforward beat block with some huge outlier returns but mostly they are confined here within all this all right so um that's pretty obvious now let's just do the same uh, with the prices so we could just uh, do this again but instead of a reds we just go AAPL adjusted close and we do the same here on the other side okay and let's run it and as you can see very very highly correlated it's just logical and it's what we expect but for some people of course uh, it's not necessarily obvious and it's good to know these facts and it's good to double check now uh, let's just do again what we did before instead of one let's do 20 and see whether we get the same higher dispersion of these and as you can see here again um, the dispersion obviously increases by quite a lot uh, when we go to those higher um, prices now why uh, do you think we've got um, a much narrow band here and a much higher band up here well basically uh, the reason for this is because we haven't seen this in fact up here right this is a pretty uh, a parallel uh, edge whereas this is a edge that expands you can see this and so the reason for this is that at lower prices if we use percentage returns the um, um, or the, uh, sorry, no, 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 nothing to do with percentage returns. I take that back. At lower prices, the price differences here are much smaller, right? Uh, it's just so much, much lower. And then as we increase at higher price levels, the price differences get much larger. And hence, over a longer period of time, uh, the dispersion actually increases. Uh, so if we have 20 day lags, then the dispersion at those higher price levels increases. And so this is what we see here, you know, when, when we have uh, lower prices, then it's quite small. And as it gets to higher prices, it diverges quite a bit. So this is uh, really how this works. And um, that's all, you know, and I hope uh, this was quite helpful and interesting. So if you have any questions, uh, please check them out in the comments. If any other things are unclear, um, We've got some uh, good workshops on backtesting and other topics of quantitative finance. Uh, please check them also out. We post the links below and um, you will learn a lot more of this stuff. Thanks for watching.